Hello there, people of the internet. I have been asked a couple of times to make some videos on some Canadian guns, rather guns that Canadians can own and use, like things that don't require for them uh, whatever their special license is for, honestly, I don't know the Canadian gun laws. <laughs> So the big issue with me making firearms related to Canadian stuff is I am in the United States. I don't know what your Canadian gun laws are. I have been told there are certain firearms that Canadians can own. So let's go ahead and go over like what the best firearms would be for whatever practical situations the Canadians would have. We're also going to cover like ban states as well. Just because Canadian gun laws and ban states, from what I've been able to gather, seem to be pretty on par with one another. Basically, any place where owning something like this is just too scary, and you're not allowed to have it because the people in power say you're not allowed to have it because they have it, and it's some of the best stuff out there, and they want the best stuff while you have nothing, this way they maintain their power over you. So. If this is too scary for you to own in your particular location, I recommend moving or voting those people out of office because those people have these and they know how good they are and they know that if something goes down, they want to have the best while you are dealing with some obsolete firearm from yesterday's past. So one of the big things that I hear from both banned states and Canadians is how fantastic the SKS rifle is in these particular locations. Uh, the SKS definitely has its benefits, especially, 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 people always yell at me for how I pronounce that word, as long as you guys understand what I'm saying, who gives a, you know, who, who, who cares, right? Um, these right here definitely have the perks, especially if we're talking about the amount of ammo you can hold on clips in comparison to like an AK mag, if we're talking about weight ratios. I did a video on that a while back and the math came out to like you can hold 50% more ammo for an SKS with the ammo on clips in comparison to an AK mags. Uh, so it definitely has some benefits to it. It's got that 10 round magazine, which is, you know, a limitation in many states and I'm not sure Canada, but apparently the SKS is a go-to, so I think it's a 10 round capacity limitation up there. I could be wrong. Uh, it looks like an old wood and steel gun, but it's a semi-auto self-loading rifle that fires 7.62x39, that is an intermediate cartridge. It's a 123 grain-ish bullet, moving at about 2400 or so feet per second. Uh, this rifle is definitely served very well in multiple conflicts all around the world. It is a good rifle. It is the best of a bad situation. Something like the AR is going to be like, he like head over heels better than something like this. If we're talking about a decent AR, I know a lot of people will go in there in, into the comments and they'll tell me about how they'll take an SKS over a budget AR because you don't know if the budget AR is going to work. I'll give you that. I'll take the SKS over an AR that is like a low tier, like, I don't know, the Omnimax hybrid from ATI or something. I'll take the SKS over something like that. But if we're talking about a decent AR, one that you can stick, like what I got there, I got magnifier, red dot, iron sights, flashlight we got rail systems we got like it, there's just so much that you can do with that ar you can even swap out the calibers for it i uh, can very easily you know just change the barrel on that make it 300 blackout i could do a very simple bolt swap uh six five grendel i could swap out uppers for a whole variety of different things bottom line ar is just stupidly customizable for whatever situation it is that you find yourself in but there's very few situations that you may find yourself in that something like this could not handle. The big issue with this right here is, you know, your lack of ability to mount optics, your lack of rail systems, your lack of a bunch of stuff without significantly customizing the rifle. People always tell me, well, if you're, you know, these are better because you can throw the modern stocks on it, or these are better because they have the external magazines that you can put on here and they got 30 rounds in it or these are better because of xyz thing all you're doing is you're making an ar with extra steps guys like the sks this is the sks if you go customizing it it's not an sks anymore okay so 
This right here is probably the best option in both banned states and Canada, but that's because you're making the best of a bad situation. In Canada, they don't have, uh, like, bans on imports and stuff like what we have here in the U.S. Like, we can't get things from China or Russia. Uh, there's certain ammo that we can't get from certain places, etc., etc. So apparently up there you can get these for nice and cheap because they're still being imported from the military surplus market. So if you're in an area like that, this right here might be the best uh, for your bad situation because that is definitely a <laughs> bad situation. All right, somewhere over here on this gun wall, there she is. This is also a really good option if you want a full-powered rifle. This is an Ishapur 2A1, but of course, up there in Canada, I think 303 British is very predominant. Uh, since this right here is chambered in 7.62 NATO here in the United States, this is probably going to be one of your better options. I'm not sure what would be better in Canada. I'm sure some Canadians down below will be able to tell me whether or not 7.62 NATO or 303 British is going to be the better option. I'm not sure what's more available up there, etc., etc. Uh, but this right here, 7.62 NATO, 10-shot magazine. It's a very fast rifle. The reality is this bolt-action rifle, uh, with its speed, with its capabilities, with its external magazines, you just pull the old mag out, you put a new mag in that has ammo in it. Uh, someone who knows how to run these at least half decently fast should be able to be about on par with somebody else running, say, a self-loading, full-powered rifle. Uh, it's, 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 of course, not going to be exactly on par, but it's going to be fast enough to most likely handle whatever situation it is that you need to handle. Again, no real way to mount any scopes or optics or anything to this without any real significant modification, but again, you could do worse. This right here is probably going to be one of your best full-powered rifled options, either one in 7.62 NATO, which is what I recommend here in the States, or 303 British, but of course, if you want to rock, I don't know, Mosin, Mauser, whatever it is, you know, take your pick. Uh, in the event that you don't have extra magazines, these right here are actually fed with a stripper clip. So you could fill that magazine up pretty gosh darn easily. If you're rocking the 7.62 NATO rifle like what I have here, uh, the stripper clips, because it is a rimless cartridge, are nice and easy to load inside of this magazine. It takes very, very little effort, unlike something like 303 British, which is a rimmed cartridge, which does take a little bit of extra force to load uh, from that style of stripper clip. The 303 cartridge, especially if we're talking about modern-made ammunition, does not have the chamfer on it, so you do risk having rim lock. It's not that big of a deal. Just kind of power through it, you know, force your force your way through that. But this right here, really good option. Another really good option in banned states that I hear all the time, and I'm not sure if Canadians can own these or not, but I think they can. Insert your choice of lever action here. This right here is an 1860 Henry. Uh, uh, take your pick of lever action. This is just what I have on the wall here. So, with your lever action rifles, you can have... Oh, I guess it depends on the caliber. Bottom line is you can have a multi-shot rifle or pistol caliber carbine, 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 however it is that you guys feel like pronouncing that word too. Uh, you can have a fairly decent amount of firepower that should be able to handle most of your situations, especially if we're talking about a modern lever action that has rail systems and optic mounts and different variations of ways that you can mount whatever it is that you want on your rifle to be able to handle whatever job it is that the rifle is intended to handle. Personally, for the lever action, I think that the 357 Magnum 38 Special Lever Action is probably going to be the best caliber choice for that. Uh, just at the distances that most people are capable at shooting at, 357 Magnum, it's powerful enough to handle those distances. Most ammunition, factory ammunition anyway, is accurate enough to handle those distances. Most people can't shoot anything beyond like 25 yards. Seriously, go down to your local gun range, watch people shoot. They have pie plate accuracy at 25 yards. I'm not making that up. If you manage to shoot, you know, sub MOA accuracy at 100 yards, you are an exception. Not a lot of people are like you. Even the people who claim that they can shoot sub MOA at 100 yards, they just cannot. Bottom line, at the distances that your average person is able to shoot, that is just a good uh, cartridge, like uh, just a good setup in general. 
if you want a little bit more power, uh, the 3030 Winchester, that is always a really, really good option as well whenever it comes to your lever actions, but you have significantly less ammunition. Like I know I have a Rossi 357, and I think it holds like 16 rounds of 357 if memory serves me correctly. And that's not even the long rifle version of that system. I can't quite remember how many it holds, but I know it's quite a few versus my 3030 of the same length. And I think it only holds six rounds. Bottom line, uh, if you have yourself a lever action, you have a lot of rounds that you can send down range pretty gosh darn effectively. Anyone who can cycle the lever of your lever action with any real speed, that should be fast enough to handle whatever problem it is that you are trying to handle. Uh, you can also, especially if you have a uh, lever action has like a king's gate or something on it, uh, you can load one round in a time through that king's gate. It is a slower loading system, but it is a system that you can keep topped off and essentially load uh, perpetually as you go. Let's say you fire your three rounds, pull three rounds from your belt, load it in, versus something like an AR, if I have an AR 29 round magazine, actually I think that this one is a 15 round magazine. Yeah, this one right here is the 15 round for YouTube compliance. Uh, if I have an AR mag and I fire, say, 10 rounds of my 15 rounds, if I want to take this out and actually, you know, load it to be able to have more ammo in my firearm, I have to remove my magazine thing. I just have one round in the chamber and I got to sit here and load this thing individually versus your lever action which you're loading in the side even if something comes up guess what you still have your if you're going to load five rounds you only load three if something comes up you have to shoot at uh you you still have the option of those three rounds that you just loaded you don't have to worry about trying to reinsert a magazine into your firearm it's just a it's it's not a bad option in an area where you are restricted with the things that you can have so here's my video of what I think some of the best options are for banned states and Canadians with the asterisk of I don't 100% know Canadian gun law. So it should pour 2A1 or any of your lean field rifles. I think that's probably going to be the best bolt action rifle for practical purposes. If we want to talk about the actual best bolt action rifle for the time where they were designed, that's a whole other topic. SKS, that's probably going to be your best self-loader. I don't know if, like, the base version of the Mini 14 and the Mini 30, I don't know if those are things that the Canadians can own. I know that we have those in the banned states here in the United States, but I'm not sure about the Canadians. That's why I left that one off the list. Or lever actions. Again, I'm not sure about Canadians, but I think that they can own those. I'm sure someone's going to tell me down in the comments below. Uh, however... Besides that, I guess, yeah, I guess we can show off these. I think up there in Canada, you're allowed to own muzzle loaders as well. There's not a whole lot to say about these. They don't take cartridges, they're black powder. You pour the powder down the barrel, you seat whatever projectile on top of it. There's some sort of ignition system. Uh, pull back whatever hammer it is that you're wanting to fire and send your lead downrange. I'm pretty sure that the Canadians can own these. I don't know what the licensing requirements are on them. I know that in every state you can own these, even in the banned states. So that is definitely a big benefit for these. As a matter of fact, here in the United States, those don't even count as firearms. All right, thanks for watching, folks. Appreciate your time. Like, subscribe, share. Description below has a link to all sorts of stuff. Go check it out. You guys go off. Have yourself a fantastic day. I'll see you on the next episode.
I've done this. Bonnie and Clyde be damned. <laughs> Poor man's Garrett. <laughs> it's a shame that bolt-action shotguns aren't uh, more mainstream.